Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's review, I am going to be testing out the Natasha Denona Glam Palette for you. So if you want to hear my thoughts, see how I did this look. I also talk about a little bit of a comparison between the Sultry Palette. Then just keep watching. This is my first time filming in 10 days. It feels so good to be back in my element and what way to bring filming back than to bring in the newest Natasha Denona palette. At this point, I really kind of feel like a veteran when it comes to reviewing Natasha Denona palettes. If you're new to my channel, I actually basically have reviewed every single palette that Natasha Denona has come out with up to this point. So I do think I have pretty good experience with Natasha's formula at this point. So it's pretty easy for me to judge upon first impression. So like I said, this is a first impression, but I do have a lot of background knowledge. Um, so this guy, of course, the Natasha Denona Glam Eyeshadow Palette, it is $65. I love that basically every palette she's come out with is now the smaller size. She also has the Love Palette, and I believe it's called the Sunrise Palette in this packaging, and uh, I just love that. It has holes in the back, and you can put a needle through, and you will be able to pop the individual shades out if you would like to do that or rearrange the shades. This is my favorite packaging probably because it's the most sturdy and I like getting a large number of colors for a smaller price because beforehand she was doing palettes that basically were like twice the price with bigger pans and I like smaller pans. I have a big eyeshadow collection. This is available on the Natasha Denona website, Sephora, and it should be coming to Beautylish very soon if it's not already up. Right now it's only available online but it will be available September 14th in stores if you want to go check that out. It does not say it's limited edition. I think honestly this isn't going to end up being limited edition because it's kind of a staple that her collection needs. So you have very nice light gray silver packaging. When you open it up, you have a nice big mirror and then you have your 15 shades. Online, this is described as an everyday palette that creates super dramatic smoky eyes as well as a variety of natural and extreme glam looks. And I have to 100% agree with that description wholeheartedly. This is a glam palette. When this palette came out, so many of you guys were tagging me and you were like, I know you're gonna love this. A cool tone palette. If you don't follow me, I have been asking Natasha to come out with a cool toned palette. She needed it. I was tired of all her warms. I don't typically gravitate towards warm toned palettes. Of course, I wear any eyeshadow color. I don't mind. I don't mind a warm look, but I love cool toned palettes. I really have a deep appreciation when brands come out with them because there's just not so many on the market. Like if I were to come out with a makeup brand, my first palette would be a cool tone palette because I think there really is a lack of cool tones in the makeup industry right now. A lot of people are scared of them. They might think it washes them out. <sighs> cool tone doesn't always mean like gray and silver. I know I'm wearing that right now, but I like more neutral cool tones. So maybe not necessarily a super gray. I did play with that today. But I think my everyday preference is probably more neutral cool tones, but that's beside the point. I really feel like she heard me. She listened to me. I said, you need a cool tone palette, and she did it. So I'm personally very happy about this. Now, I know it's a particular taste for cool tone palettes. So some people, or I would say a lot of people, maybe weren't pleased with this color story, which I can understand, but people need to give cool tones a chance. Like, they're just not trendy, but I... They're so nice, you guys. Some information that she gave out in her Instagram stories, all of these are brand new shades. It's in her typical matrix kind of layout, meaning you can create a look going this way, this way, or in a square, which you can kind of see that developed. I mean, I don't know if every which way is going to create an amazing look. I do think with this overall tone though, all of these colors are going to match each other. So that's very awesome. Like you can kind of pair any shadow in here and it's gonna look good in a look. Also something interesting about this palette is she didn't give them like a themed name, the individual shades like she normally does, which I'm totally okay with. She named them like center eyelid, outer eyelid, inner corner, basically the parts of the eyes that she would recommend placing them. So if you're a beginner, that may be very helpful for you. But of course, it's just a recommendation. You don't have to. But even when I was applying them, I found I was applying them where she would apply them. So that could be helpful. And I don't know, I don't really care for shades to have a name, if I'm being honest. So I don't mind this, but it does take away from the story. And I feel like she always does have stories as far as her shade names go. But it's a new approach and I don't mind it. So there are five true mattes in here and then five shimmers. 
Now, I think there's a little bit of differentiation within the shimmer finishes. Some are truly like a shimmer finish. Some I think bridge more towards foiled. And then there's a couple that have kind of her crystal powder that she puts into her formulas. Like these two right here have that little bit of an extra glimmer crystal glowiness to them. Overall, based on my swatches, this seems to be a very consistent palette. A lot of times, I would say 99% of the time with Natasha's palette, there's always one that even by swatching I can tell, oof, it's not going to be good. She's playing around with formulas when she shouldn't have. In here, every single formula is consistent and creamy and packed with pigment. I have swatched this multiple times, felt every single shade. We're good, guys. A consistent palette. <laughs> I love Natasha so much and it's a little bit disappointing to me whenever there's a dud in her palettes. There's not a dud in here, I promise. The color story of this guy, very, very cool toned and I love that. You do have some more, not warm, but brown based neutrals. Those are kind of my cup of tea. And then you also, especially like down in this area, they're more gray based cool tones. So I went a little bit more gray with my look today, but on an everyday basis, I do prefer the more neutral, cooler brown tones but I like that you have two different options and I think having the brown based cool tones and the gray based cool tones really make this a very complete cool toned palette and not a lot of brands do this. A lot of times with cool tone palettes they really only do grays and as I've been saying throughout this video I like cool tones but I don't want like gray and silver all the time. I don't think brands capitalize enough on the neutral brown cool tones and I'm so happy <laughs> that this palette has it. Critiques that I saw was that you can't get that many looks with these colors. I will say taking a look like yeah they're kind of in a similar tone and I don't think maybe that this is the most versatile palette as far as the types of looks that you can get but that's not really the point. This is a cool tone palette. You're gonna get cool tone looks out of this and I'm happy she didn't put pops of color like navy or purple or something like that. This is a true wearable and glam smoky palette and she really stuck with her guns and I, I really appreciate that. I do. The one critique that I do have is that I wish there were some deeper transition shades in here. I feel like the mattes, like she does have a black and a bit of a more chocolatey brown. She has good basic transition colors. I feel like there's a lot of like these light shimmery shades that we have that you would use maybe as like an inner corner color. She could have taken out one or two of those to add in a little bit more variety in the transition shades, but that's my only critique really. Before I get into the tutorial, I just want you to know quality across the board on this guy, really fantastic, super buttery mattes, super creamy metallic foiled shimmers, very easy to apply, everything blended out great. So I'm gonna take you to the tutorial so you can see how I got this look. So I'm using my MAC Paint Pot all over as my base and this is an Esam W25 brush. With the Wayne Goss number three brush, we're gonna use this shade right here. It is labeled as transition and I definitely wanted to try it out. So it's a very light shade. If you have, I would say even like a, light medium skin tone and up this can look potentially a little bit ashy I'll let you take a look on me so this is just barely crossing the line as a transition shade I think it's a great versatile shade it's a great all-over lid color no matter your skin tone but labeling it as a transition shade might be a little bit of risky territory but it worked out for me in this case Wayne Goss number four we're gonna start slowly building the crease you guys know I'm all about starting light slowly adding in the deep shades and I am doing a slight halo technique not like a crazy halo eye by any means, but just building some definition both in the inner and outer corner. As you can see, these are blending quite seamlessly. Now we're taking the shade right here. It's called Smoke, and it's a nice, neutral, cooler toned brown. This type of shade is just one of my most used shades in the world. You use them for so many different looks, and it adds depth without being quite as dramatic as a black. And as you can see, I'm focusing that on the inner and outer corner 
corner, I'm using a rougher number one brush. And then I'm gonna go in with the original brush that we used and blend that out. Unfortunately, I'm not using a ton of shades in today's look. This is just a first impressions, but you guys know I'm quite familiar with the Natasha formula. We're gonna take this shade right here. It's labeled as an outer eyelid color. This particular shade almost has that like crystal extra shiny formula where you can see little tiny reflex. She does a that a lot with her formulas. I know my nails are really long and gross. I just ripped off all of the gel polish that I had on, which is so bad for your nails, but whatever. And so I placed down the inner and outer part of my eyelid with my Wayne Goss number seven. We're going in this shade right here. So this is just a light to mid-tone silver shade and it's labeled as a center eyelid shade. So that's what I'm using it for. Of course, for this look, you can definitely bring more light to the eye by using one of the even lighter shades shades that she has, but I want to keep this one pretty silvery, smoky-like. And I'm going to take my big fluffy brush, blend that all out. So I basically have an all metallic silver eye, and then those matte shades are working as that underlying definition. I most definitely had to mess around with the black shade, which is right in the center. It's called Lash Line. I'm just patting or rolling in my Wayne Goss number five brush. It's just a pointy brush. Make sure you tap off the excess. Black follow is the worst. And I'm going to create a very soft, smoky wing. A way you can get such a soft wing is not using a super Super defined brush so using just like a simple pointy brush like this just to build kind of an aura of the shape and then I'm blending whatever's left along the lash line so just like that subtle definition one of my favorite smoky eye tricks just take a black it might seem scary I promise you it's not on a pencil brush just work it out along the lower lash line like I said, it seems very harsh not having anything underneath, but I find it to look really nice when you take an eyeliner. I'm using the Wayne Goss Eye Coal in Obsidian. Make sure you tight line all the way around. Grabbing my BK 207, we're gonna use this shade right here, which is the lightest silver that's called Inner Corner. And I'm going to do just that, put it in my inner corner. You can also put it right in the center of the eyelid to really add some extra light, but I think I'm just gonna leave it like like this so creamy and pigmented it's a bit much I'm not always super in love with completely gray silver toned looks like even though I love a cool tone sometimes gray is still a little bit too much for me but when you're going for it you really got to go for it so line your lashes and I'll show you the final look and with lashes I used these base blue cosmetics lashes in flying lashes treepy they are so pretty but uh, lashes just complete a look love this so I did get some questions as to how this compared to the ABH sultry palette so I did some side-by-side -side swatch comparisons with you overall they are very similar I would say you know if you're tight for money and you have the sultry I don't think that you need the glam palette especially because because ABH does have a really fantastic formula also but the cool tone lover in me just feels like the market really lacks cool tones so I'm really excited that this one is on the market so I'm going to show you the comparisons now if you were to ask me how close the sultry is to the glam palette I have every single color from the glam palette swatched on top and then all of the similar colors from the sultry on the bottom now the sultry definitely has a few shades that were not even close to the glam so I just didn't even put down something close. The ratio of colors is very different. I think that the Glam palette has more like inner corner, highlighty, center of the lid kind of shades, whereas the Sultry is actually a bit deeper. The Sultry, I think, overall has a little bit more warmth, and a lot of that is pulled into by the red shade that they have in there, but the colors also just look a little bit deeper to me, whereas Overall, this palette's a little bit more gray and a little bit more light. That being said, kind of across the board, I would say if you have the Sultry palette and you're content with that number of cool tones, you don't grab for it a lot, I would say you don't need the Glam palette. But if you're like me and you just love cool tones and there's just not enough cool tone palettes out right now, the Glam is definitely a great grab for palette. But you do get some more depth out of the Sultry. Anyways, yeah, they're pretty close. There's a lot of close matches. All right, you guys, so that is all I have 
for today's review. If you couldn't tell, I really love this palette. I don't think it's everybody's cup of tea, but if this is your color story, just like it's mine, just know that the quality you're getting in here is really fantastic. You're not gonna get a dud in here. You guys know I love sharing my love for cool tones and I wanna push them onto you guys, but if it's not your color story, it's not your color story, but give it a go, seriously. This is a perfect palette. I'm so happy that she brought this out. This is one of my new favorites in her line. I really need to do a re-ranking video because she's added a lot of palettes and as of now, this one is my current favorite just because I'm so excited about it. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I'll see you guys in the next one.